So, I guess hello everybody. Hello, our, hello, hello. Yeah, this is our first podcast. What we're doing here is, uh, my name is Tony, and I'm Doug. Yeah, and what we're what we're doing here, and of course, uh, pardon if it's a bit rough, but we're going to start uh, doing some commentary on just pop culture, current pop culture, current uh, our pop culture that we live through throughout our life. Both of us are uh, Generation X, I guess. Yeah, on the verge. I yeah. think we're, we're on the verge. Not boomers, you know. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're kind of on that line. Right. Yeah. We're in our 50s, and yeah. uh, and we think we have a kind of a unique perspective, so we're really kind of doing this for ourselves, but uh, we're high on a tower in ba- Burbank, California. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so for our first one, we, did, we decided we would just kind of keep it simple, and uh, both of us recently went to go see the movie Maverick, but we didn't see it together. And we thought it might be interesting to to discuss that. Uh, it it came out about uh, I don't know about three weeks ago. This is its third weekend, and uh, so I guess we're talking about things that are clearly in the past. But again, we're just experimenting here. So sure. uh, so well that it that was the this is the first post COVID movie that really was like a blockbuster, so to speak, right? That they, it's doing really good in numbers as far as financially? Uh, maybe uh, but you, you had a, a No Way Home. Spider-Man did really well. Oh, okay. okay. So that was post-COVID. But I mean, there's a... But I, I will tell you, I think uh, just kind of knowing what I, I've read, it it, uh, it had probably one of the greatest second weeks of a movie. Okay. You know? So, uh, and uh, it's like Tom Cruise's biggest... Uh, uh, biggest movie, or uh, at least initially ever. You know what I mean. So okay. you got to think about that's a guy who's got a lot of big movies. But, but, uh, but I know the movie. I guess, and I'm sure if if there's if we turn comments on, uh, people will correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, uh, this movie, I think, finished production in 2020, and mm. you know, and they've been they've been kind of holding it. Mm. You know, thinking that it'll it'll uh, you know they wanted to release it in theaters, which you know we can get into that mm. here in a minute. But uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. All right, so. What'd you think? A little, uh, little mad. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, me and Doug have some history here. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell a quick story, okay, uh, that uh, that Doug and I actually went to go see the uh, the third Batman movie together. Remember mm. that? Do you remember when to go see it? Which, Where was that? I I was in, it was like in California. Was it was it? like right after you were in Cal- you were in, okay. you were near San Francisco. Okay. And uh, I remember like you were not a fan, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, and, and I kind of called you out on that. And uh, in retrospect, uh, yeah, man, you were right. It wasn't that great. Which which Batman was that? Uh, Hello, everyone. I wanted to jump in here uh, while editing this podcast. Uh, I realize we're not real clear on what we're talking about. Uh, we're actually referring to the uh, Dark Knight Rises, the uh, 2012 movie starring uh, Tom Hardy as Bane. Uh, I think both Doug and I, I'm pretty sure, are fans of the Dark Knight, which is the uh, one that has the, uh, the Joker, Heath Ledger. Uh, but Doug had kind of... Uh, commented to me previously about The Dark Knight Rises and how he wasn't a big fan, and I chastised him for that. And again, in retrospect, I feel like he was right about it. It it is not a movie that stands up. So anyway, back to the podcast. Is it the one with Bane and? Uh, oh yeah, the one with Bane. Yeah. yeah, not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah. And 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 yeah. and and again, you know, I I was still kind of uh, kind of, uh, you know, in that place with the Joker. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, I, and, a bit, and obviously mm-hmm. I loved it, but, but that movie didn't age well with me, mm-hmm. you know, for, mm-hmm. for probably all the reasons you mentioned at the time. So respect. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> well, okay. So I'm going to reciprocate that real quick. Tony's the one who turned me on first to, um, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. He called me one day way back in the nineties when that first came out and he said, Oh shit, man, I just saw this movie. You got to see this thing. It's crazy. And, um, uh, yeah, mind blown totally. So, and then I, that turned me on to Tarantino altogether. So, yeah, and from this, we've kind of agreed that uh, if there's a movie that uh, that one of us likes, we won't actually comment on what our thoughts of the movie are, or we won't even believe and say, you know, don't look at the trailer, anything like mm. that. Just go ahead and watch it, and then we'll kind of hash it out. And it's important to note that probably uh, Doug and I have similar tastes, but they're not they're not perfectly the same. Yeah, no, not they're, I would say close, but not really close. Not real close, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With that said, uh, this movie, uh, Maverick, yeah, you know, I've actually seen it twice now, and I tell you, I really liked it. I liked it a lot, and but I wasn't too sure if I wasn't just on the bandwagon, mm-hmm. and then, uh, so I said, let me go and see it again uh, at IMAX, because that's what everybody says to go see it, is mm-hmm. see it at IMAX, and uh, and so I went to go see it there, and uh, no, I still thought it was a great flick, man. Okay. I still really enjoyed it. Uh, to tell you why, I and again, I 
there, there's a lot to unpack mm-hmm. uh, as far as why I, I like it as a movie. Is it the greatest movie ever made? Clearly not. Mm-hmm. You know, is it? Uh, uh, but uh, but I think in the current climate of of making movies, what we see come out, you know, we live in this kind of Marvel world. Uh, I I think it really really uh, uh, was a was something different and I was super impressed by it. I was super impressed by the, like I, and again, what everybody else talks about, I thought the, the flight scenes were, you know, the, the way mm-hmm. they did all that, I thought was amazing. Yeah. Of course the story was not, you know, is pretty streamlined. You know what I thin, mean? I would call yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Thin, yeah, definitely right? thin. But, but, uh, it, and, and it did kind of, we talked about, I just mentioned, uh, no way home. Uh, I think there was some nostalgia mm-hmm. that, that they kind of pushed, but I don't think they overdid it. Uh, yeah. See, I disagree with you on that. On you think the, they overdid? You think they overdid? I, oh, I God, think what so. did you, okay. Enough about me. What okay. do you think? <laughs> okay. So, and we'll get into I, this. I, yeah. So, I think that uh, visually, the the movie was uh, just shy of spectacular. I <laughs> thought it was really, really visually stimulating. Right. The, uh, the the flight scenes were good. Sure. The camera shots were good. Um, and, and that doesn't always happen, even in big movies. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's sometimes there's all kinds of problems in these big movies. And um, and this one, I think they they did a really nice job, um, like visually representing Top Gun mm-hmm. as, as the franchise. Um, on that same note, some of the things I did not like is I think the homage to the first movie was just layered on way too thick, really? man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for example, right, by the time you get to the scene where Tom Cruise walks in mm-hmm. um, to, you know, to like, oh, geez, that's the guy we were, you know, threw out of the bar last night. Mm-hmm. By the time you get to that scene, you get it, right? We, we get it. There's an homage to mm-hmm. the previous film, but that scene where he walks in i mean shot for shot it is identical to the first movie yeah with the, the tracking shot with him he, he's carrying a clipboard and she had a handbag or something yeah i forget uh, i forget the character's name but uh, uh it was a, it yeah was a, the, it was a male the kelly mcgillis yeah Kel- talking, kelly mcgillis, mcgillis yeah, exactly. when she oh, walks in oh yeah it was shot for shot and sure. same same thing with the i thought they 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 did an excellent job in casting uh-huh. the rooster and goose oh my god <laughs> yeah so awesome but they overdid it they kept showing the same like Hawaiian shirt with the white undershirt. Sure. He sings, he sings he said, Great Ball of yeah, Fire. And, yeah, and I was just like, oh my sure. God. And okay. slapped me in the face with it. Right. So I anyway, that's, it. that's just my take. Just okay. my take, right? But um, again, I won't beat up on the story. It's it's a story, right? And then, you know, obviously the impossible mission and all of that oh, sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, right. Um, but in terms of the flight scenes, um, yeah. Sure. This is great, man. Oh, I, I, again, uh you know, and I'm sure we, we'll, I, I would like to deal with, uh, delve into it a little bit uh, as we kind of go. But yeah, you know, it's clearly got this kind of three act thing going on, right? Mm-hmm. And the third act, you know, when they and by the way, spoiler alert. So if you yeah, haven't whatever. seen, I don't even know yeah. why why you're listening to this if yeah. you uh, if you haven't seen the freaking movie. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but with that said, uh, we get a third act. It goes off the rails. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. it's uh, and, and again, I've seen other critiques on this, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it, it is definitely the. Uh, you know the final scene of the of mm. a new hope. You mm. know where they're mm. where they're in the trench and they're trying to blow up the Death Star. Right. It's very similar right. to that. Right. You know, one might even well, they probably did that intentionally. Yeah, but so he, let me let me just say real quick. So huh? if 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 you for whatever reason if you're listening to this at any point in the future and you haven't seen the movie, it, would you say it's worth seeing, Tony? Mm. Hundred percent. Sorry, I had a mouthful yeah. of bourbon. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say as well. I'd say it's worth seeing. Um, if you liked the first one at all, right, then it's definitely worth seeing. I I would even say if you didn't give a shit about the first one, this really? one is still worth it. Well, again, I, and I say that from my perspective. Yeah. I like the first one. It was okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, I I kind of parrot what a lot of other people are saying is mm-hmm. the fact that I thought Top Gun was an okay movie that mm-hmm. literally was. In my back, you know, it, what you know, when when somebody says to me, you know, what's your favorite movie of the '80s? What's your favorite movie of the '70s? Mm. Top Gun isn't in the it's top. Not 10. even on the it's list. Not even, yeah. not even on yeah. the list. Yeah. You know. And again, did I like it back then? Sure. You yeah, know, it right. was just fun, lighthearted. Sure, whatever. it might yeah. as well have been Iron Eagle or right. any of those other you right. know throwaway flicks. No Predator. You right. know what I mean? Right. So, uh, right. uh, or like I said, or Raiders of the Lost Ark or any of those. Right. You know, and uh, so I I do think this, this is a superior movie to the first one. Uh, and I say that with actually not revisiting the first one, but, uh, mm. but I would say it's worth seeing for the reasons you've kind of mentioned mm. the, the, the flight footage. Mm. And, and again, I think that's what I really respect about the movie makers, Tom Cruise and so forth is they had a vision mm. and uh, man, they went for it. I mean, we live in this world that, you know, basically, you know, they need to do something and they contact the, the folks and they uncork some CGI mm. and, you know, and you got these actors, 
you know, playing in a room in front of a, uh, in front of a green screen. And right. there's none of this in this movie. You yeah. know what I mean? I, clearly there's some only in that, like, you know, they're not, uh, you know, uh, launching missile missiles at uh, right, F-18s, right, right. but, uh, right. But, uh, but man, but I see, that's the other thing on a, on a technical side, you talked about, um, you know, getting, getting the actual job done. So making a movie, of course, is, it's a big project, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot. It's, it's all the logistics that go into it. But I will have to say on this one, on the camera stuff again, uh, one of the things that I really liked is that they, they use a lot of like classic camera moves mm-hmm. that elicit emotion. We've been trained, sure, you know, since the 30s and the 20s to to respond a certain way mm-hmm. to the push in, you know, the sure. close up push in, yeah. uh, and they use those really effectively mm-hmm. in this. I thought, you know, well, and you know the 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 camera slide and the dolly moves, mm-hmm. all of those I thought were. Um, on point, yeah. You know, well, and a lot of times they'll get. I'm sorry to cut you off, no. but a lot of times in movies nowadays, it's like, it's like the movie makers feel like they have to be artistic, so they throw some of that stuff in, and it just feels out of place because it doesn't, it doesn't mesh well with the actual story. Mm-hmm. And whoever was director of photography on this, I don't even know who it was. Uh, they they meshed those camera moves mm-hmm. really well with the story, and and. You know, they, they are supposed to elicit a certain emotional response. And when they're out of place, for me, uh, watching it kind of in a technical way, when those things are out of place, it makes me like, what? You know, mm. it, it, it breaks that it breaks that um, suspension and disbelief. But in this one, I, I didn't have that at all. They were, on, was, they were on point. They were totally on point. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and you talk about that, I think about certain scenes in this movie that you, you mentioned elicit an emotional response. And uh like there's that one scene towards the end uh, before uh, before they launch the final mission, and like Maverick is down in the hangar, and the two F-18s come rolling down on the oh yeah the silhouette. Oh shot. my god, man! Yeah. You're just kind of like yeah. you can't yeah. you can't look at that and just be it just yeah, not be a, that's the oh, hero it, shot. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and uh, and the fact that like uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. There's parts in there, where, man. Uh, it, it like it was a gut punch kind yeah. of emotionally, like right. like where. Uh, the admiral says to him, "You know, this is where you belong," hmm. and uh, and and there's and again to kind of uh, uh, kind of dig into this a little bit deeper. One of the re- and I, I completely agree that there there you know this isn't this is not a, a perfect movie uh, because again the story is kind of thin. It takes definite uh, clearly just to to, to deliver a uh, uh, a good story. It takes massive liberties mm-hmm. uh, with with the material. Uh, I, I, you know, the Jennifer Connelly character, which by the way, she's still beautiful. She's oh. A, oh my God. She, she killed it. Yeah. Oh, I thought stunning. she killed it in that movie. Yeah. yeah. But her character was not a particularly strong character. Oh, no, no. Yeah. That, the character is pretty one dimensional. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, when I mean, you're talking about that suspension and disbelief and, yeah. and, and the believability of the character, so to speak, cause you can't, I yeah. mean, this is a popcorn movie. Like you sure. were just saying, you know, it's not oh, like, Oh, yeah. that's the F-18s can't do that. It's not real. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you you know, know what? Go, go see something else. Cause that's <laughs> not what it's about. <laughs> I watched a, uh, a video and again, uh, I'm a YouTube junkie, and there was a Top Gun uh, senior instructor that was oh, like an actual yeah yeah pilot. And he, yeah yeah, and he was like talking to to uh, somebody in a podcast about this, and he of course he openly admits that like you know yeah it's it's you know Hollywood takes its liberties, but he was actually talking about some of the stuff they were doing, mm-hmm. like for example like when they got to the end of that trench and they had to flip the F- mm-hmm. F-15 over and drop to make the tr- make, cut, make, yeah. yeah he's like oh yeah that's a thing that's yeah. a thing you know we do that uh, because you, because he was talking about the difference between like a bla- the risk of a blackout or the risk sure. of a red out yep. and uh, also being able to be on target so he said that's you know yeah you you that's a that's a strategy that's a but again, yeah, this goes back to that this goes back to movie making right so somebody yeah. did their oh, research yeah. you know oh, and yeah. Tom Cruise was, you know to his credit he's, oh. he's a pilot He's done a lot of this stuff, and I'm, you know, he's he he got a lot of this stuff correct, I think. Sure, and, and there's and and, and again, uh, not, I don't know if we want to get into this too much, but there's a lot of hate towards Tom Cruise for a lot of the things that, eh, whatever. But yeah, that's the way I yeah. feel. I, I mean, you're on the same page. I mean, yeah. I got to tell you, I I think he stands separate in Hollywood. Hmm. You know, when it comes to making movies, I mean, I mean, uh, he, you know. Like, like when he commits himself, I mean, dude, he's, he's older than us, and, mm. you know, and look at that guy. You yeah. know what I mean? He's it, almost as buff as me. Almost. And I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. sitting across from Doug. I'm having yeah. a hard time controlling myself. Yeah, right. And I'm not gay. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll cut that out. But anyway. <laughs> I am not cutting it out. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, but yeah, the, uh, uh, no, I mean, uh, anyway, uh, 
<laughs> I forget what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, lost train of thought there. Yeah. But so, yeah, so overall, uh, good movie, uh, popcorn movie yeah. all the way. It's not, you know, don't go expecting to change your life at no. the end of this thing. But no. um, it was fun. Guard. Yeah, it was, it was a nice little adventure and it was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff uh, movie-wise you've all seen before, but it, the execution of it is really good. I will say, as far as seeing it before, though, again, the flight footage... Yeah, you haven't seen that. You haven't seen that. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, uh, well, the one shot with a with a bad. They didn't even say what country the bad guys. Very intentionally didn't say where the one country was. Yeah, but uh, that one shot where that. But we, the evasive oh, yeah. maneuver that that I airplane know exactly did what you're was talking like, about. wow, yeah. that was that was like to me that was the highlight well, of the impressiveness of the of the footage. Yeah, and and back on that that uh, uh, discussion that I saw with the Top Gun the Top Gun uh, trainer, uh, he even commented like, yeah, clearly they used F. You know, they, the logic they used to why they had to use F 18s might hold up. You know, the whole like the mm-hmm. GPS jam, jamming. He was kind of like, well, you know, you mm-hmm. know, who knows? Because, you know, obviously if you had a choice, you'd want to use F-35s so or they use GPS targeting, sure. blah, blah, blah. Right. And that's what the guy was saying. But but the, he said the real reason they want to use F-18s is F-18s are, two, are potentially two-seater aircraft and mm. F-35s aren't, you yeah. know? And so that way they could they could do what you they did. You could have did. the co-pilot. Yeah, yeah they, 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 could the, they could put Tom Cruise in the back. <laughs> yes. You know, and make it look like he's a single pilot, pl- single yeah. uh, seat plane. But, uh, uh, but yeah, all the, all the rigs they use, the, the IMAX stuff was created specifically for that film. Could you tell a difference in IMAX that it was like, was it more impressive? Because I didn't go see it in IMAX. I, I, I incrementally imp- more impressive. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? In other words, it wasn't like, it didn't like knock. It, it, the, the sound was better. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's, I was going to mention that too. Like, so, okay. Watch probably, I would say almost any modern film. And, and I would say Marvel films might be an exception to this, but mm-hmm. sound, it's almost like, I won't say it's, it's, play second fiddle but it, it it doesn't seem like they pay as much attention to sound nowadays as they did at one point yeah. uh, making movies and this was not that way this was no. very 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 good sound and, and, and okay okay on that uh, yeah it was yeah. like like that i mean like scene. everything like yeah. even the sound of the leather i mean i'm not just talking about the airplanes because that was very cool but right it just just that. the ambient sound you know throughout all of the scenes and stuff um yeah with the exception of great balls of fire but uh, <laughs> again i get you on that scene. yeah i yeah. mean they're like we get it he's goose's son yeah. i get that okay but ten, uh, more, 10 minutes later we still get it, we get it. Oh, okay. but, but it, you know the whole thing you're supposed to get that whole touching <laughs> thing where he's looking through a window it was I know. it was a thing i mean again i I, I will say that I make the comment that I don't think they went too heavy on the nostalgia. I'm trying to do that like in context because I saw the new Ghostbusters movie. And of course, you know, even even Spider-Man No Way Home, which I liked uh, that day, really, man, that was like as much peanut butter as you can get on the sandwich. You know wow. what I mean? But uh, but this one, I I felt uh, uh, like, again, I, I think you're right about that scene. But God, man, the, the actor they got to play. Uh, the yeah. rooster, yeah, he's yeah. perfect. Oh my yeah. god, yeah. He, dude, I, guy, even, I think they made the mustache him do the mustache just like goose. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, but uh, but yeah, as far as the sound goes, yeah, I agree. Like uh, and that opening footage where they, because you know, I, I, again, talk about homage and the mm-hmm. and to the original movie and nostalgia. Of course, the opening scene was them uh, near that aircraft, you know, uh, doing the aircraft carrier mm-hmm. thing, you know. And of course, they played Danger Zone, which like you're like yeah. hell yeah. yeah. I mean, again, is it the best Kenny Loggins song? I don't know, but mm-hmm. it's but it's, it suits the film. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but I mean, more like in sound was I'm thinking about, and most people won't really care about this. Right. So, you know, you can absolutely take this with a grain of salt. But if you look at the 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 scenes where, like for example, where he's working on that P fifty one Mustang. Oh yeah. Um, just the the small stuff, like the sounds of the hangar, the sounds of the ratchet, all of that. It's it was just good. This is like super high quality in comparison to a lot of films. I mean, they they foley a lot of that stuff and they fake it, and you can tell if you if you pay attention. You know, and and that's just one of those areas of movies that I actually like to pay attention to on a technical side. And they they definitely whoever did the sound on this was super good. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I. I mean, again, I, I think, uh, I mean, not to be uh, to paint it with too broad a uh, uh, brush, but man, it's definitely there was a lot of just a lot of quality throughout the movie, you yeah. know. And I even think, like for example, uh, like the uh, I think Tom, and again, uh, you know, we can we can criticize Tom Tom Cruise outside his acting, but I thought that he was solid as hell in this movie. The scene with him and uh, and Ice, you know, when they when he uh, went to his, his home, I mean, that was. You had to go and bring that up. Why? Oh, it was terrible. I love that scene. I hate that scene. Why? I never would have put that in the film if it was me making it. It had to be done. I think it makes no. sense. Uh, I think you're wrong. Well, I think it makes sense. Yeah. But 
to me, this is just, okay, whatever. Send the hate mail all you want. But I, <laughs> I, I think it was an embarrassment for Val Kilmer, I thought. Well, I mean, I, think, I thought they wrapped up the character pretty well. Yeah, okay. So from a story perspective, I see that. But, um, you know, it's no secret the, all the struggles that he's had. Mm -hmm. And then so to, to publicly display that in that feeble kind of a character at the end because he was such a stud in the first movie sure, right and then sure. and it's okay circle of life you know we're all going to end up in a pine box like i got all whatever but, so but i just uh, i just maybe it was just me maybe it's just like it was I hard it was to, it's hard to see him struggle like that yeah on, on the big screen but okay all right i will say that he, he didn't have to do it I know, an yeah, actor, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and I get that, and I, and I'm not even, it's not, I'm not bagging on him or picking him or anything. But I, I don't know. I thought I'm it was just saying, thinking I, from the, for me again, this is just like a watching the film that that little sequence right there, all the way to the point. To be honest with you, the point where he comes to the house and and meets the wife, mm -hmm. legit. All of that to me. It's fit right in, but then when the scene where he comes in and starts talking about Kilmer and they were and they were exchanging whatever, mm -hmm. um, it just seemed out of place. It just seemed like it it didn't fit. And this is going to be one of those situations where Doug and Tony agree to disagree. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. No, I I thought it was handled real tastefully. Okay. I, I mean, mm -hmm. but I don't think he looked feeble. I mean, he thought he did. I thought he did a good job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Could have looked a lot worse. He kicked the bucket three minutes after that was shot. This is what it looked like was going to happen <laughs> well, to me. He, he actually, yeah, he's not, he's not dead. I, I mean, know, I know. But, uh, but no, I just, thought, I just thought it was. I mean, okay. Well, we can disagree on that one. Yeah. That's fine. Well, and again, uh, I think the the ice character in there because he was the one that was kind of keeping uh, Maverick from getting mm -hmm. kicked out or whatever. Yeah. No, I'll get yeah. That. yeah, I got yeah all so that. I think, it, I think he played an important yeah. role. So, yeah. and I mean, again, you know. Um, the fact that they kind of folded in the the issues that Val Kilmer's kind of had to deal with in his life. I don't know. I, I, I thought, but again, I thought in that scene, for what it's worth, I thought that, uh, that, you know, Tom Cruise and, and uh, really like there was just, he just seemed to really kind of, well, again, the whole Maverick, you know, and we talked about this a little bit before, uh, you know, there, there's this, you know, we, we've talked about the hero's journey and how, mm -hmm. you know, and he and, and that was his low point in the movie was the fact that, you know, he was, you know, he felt like he was losing it all. And uh, and and I and again, I thought his acting just really resonated in that scene. Again, I think there's other things in that movie that, again, uh, you know, whatever. It, it, it's again, like you said, a popcorn movie. Yeah. So well, you know. I will say this, that, um, you know, whatever they, they obviously they included the Val Kilmer stuff. I thought it would have been more powerful if. um if they just just skip straight to the funeral, you know what I mean? Like Maybe so. delete that scene. Uh, Maybe. That, that's just me. But um, I will have to say this on, mm -hmm. on a positive note from the producer side. Uh, I'm really glad they did not cast Kelly McGillis. Oh, for a lot of reasons. That. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go any further. Than we'll that. stop just there. Like, oh, yeah, but, wow. uh, but yeah, the, no, I don't know. I mean, again, uh, well, I didn't think she was that great in the first one, to be uh, honest with you. Uh, she, well, I wasn't a fan. Like, and, and again, not as an actress, but that character I thought was like really one dimensional, as sure. especially compared to this one. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just didn't. I was never a huge fan of Kelly McGillis in that film. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. I, I, I guess that means I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, talking about uh, the character, oh, shit, I sh we should have wrote down names yeah. of, of actors, yeah, uh, of well, the characters, you know, whatever. whatever. Let's call him Rooster. Yeah. Uh, it'll come to me here in a bit. Penny. Penny. I think Penny was the uh, was the uh, the girlfriend uh, yeah. played by Jennifer Connelly. Uh, I, I felt her character was okay. Probably, it's funny because the end of the movie... Uh, you know, she comes pulling up and she kind of looks like a J. Crew advertisement leaning yeah. on the Porsche. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like, yeah. Oh. It's a bit, it's a, it was a bit, that, that was like, okay, it, it just kind of went over the top for okay. me. So and for I, me, there was, a, there was a lot of parts of the movie that were that way. That's, that's how my reaction to a yeah, lot of the parts. Like, you know, the sailing and all that kind of stuff too. Um, no, or? not the sailing part, but like the, the scenes um, when we meet the cast uh -huh. um, in, you know, in the, in the great balls of fire and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the, the walk in whole like i like that part but yeah you go ahead. well i'm just saying but that's to me that's the sappy stuff that i went like okay you probably could have shown me once or twice that you know this is an homage movie and then let it go and then just carry on for yourself but yeah um but anyway i feel like i'm beating a dead horse no i well i i hear you with that and, I, and, I, and i'm not gonna lie to you i mean i had similar thoughts but but again i kind of 
uh, you know, I felt, I guess, I guess there were definitely beats that were like, that were like, you know, this is going to parallel the original movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because of what we're doing here, you right. know? And, and, and also this movie is going to be its kind of original story. In other words, this whole thing where they got to blow up the nuclear thing. Right. And I felt like where there were those beats, you know, like, like, for example, like, and I, and I'm, I, I don't, and again, for the, 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 the great ball of fire scene where they're singing in the rest, the, the, the bar and so forth, maybe it was a little bit much, mm -hmm. uh, but for, but for the most part where they, where, where we saw those things, uh, you know, like the scene where at the very beginning, which by the way I, I kind of enjoyed, where he's he's flying, he's test piloting the the Skunk Works plane, mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm, blows up, and mm -hmm. and then he he ends up back on the uh, back at the uh, in the restaurant. Not, not not the oh that was a good scene by the way. Yeah. The restaurant scene was fun. So the, yeah, let, let me interrupt you there. Yeah. So the restaurant scene in walks Tom Cruise, half burned up, right? Yeah. Uh, after you uh, clearly, you know, he just just crashed his plane. Yeah. Everybody stops and stares and looks at him, and a little kid gives a little one liner in there. Was that Steven Spielbergish to you? To me, that was uh, like that's fine. Oh, that was uh, like that's okay, totally. And yeah, not even yeah. a bad way, in a good no. way. It was like sure. totally well, uh, hats off to Spielberg. You tell it was Spielberg. like it was an organ, which kind of. Yeah, you know, like it felt very Goonies like, but, that, but yeah, yeah, but that that scene to me felt like wow, Spielberg totally could have directed that but scene. That, but when that kid dropped that line, I was like, oh yeah, yeah the whole a, audience got it. Yeah, yeah, classic. Yeah. But uh, uh, but uh, you know, so he goes back and he's talking to Ed Harris, right? Mm -hmm. And Ed Harris says, "Oh, you got lucky. You mm -hmm. know, you're now you're going back to Top Gun." Well, that was that was the same shit that happened in the first yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so so again, you know, you got this kind mm -hmm. of a beat for beat, you know, uh, the end with the whole mission, you know. So yeah. uh, okay, so how about this? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta grade the film. Gotta, uh, you can, let's, what do you want to do? One to ten? You want to do five stars or four stars? How about or? one to ten? One to ten, all right. Yeah. Where, where are you at on? Uh, uh, I'll give it an eight. An eight? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, it's like six point five. All right. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah, like so that. I give an eight, and, and I could, I could pretend, and, and if I well, let me let me, well, let me qualify my six point five. Okay, compared to anything else that I've seen out of Hollywood in the last five years, I'd give it a nine. Okay, uh, but in the in the whole scope of my film watching life, uh, uh, yeah, six and a half. Uh, okay, maybe on, squeak to seven. On that point, the fact that that, I, and I think you make a very valid point in that we kind of live in a world where. Where uh, and it's interesting because because again this movie is doing something that Hollywood is doing right now. It just did it way better, mm. and that that is like you know going back to old properties, old mm -hmm. independent, you know independent properties, and their and 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 recycling them in a way you know, i.e. Ghostbusters or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just did it so well. I mm. mean, uh, so uh, so I agree. Uh, yeah. So and I, and I really am. My eight probably is in that context. Mm. Uh, probably because I'm starving for good movies. Yeah. You know. I think we all are. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, so yeah. I mean, I, uh, but uh, but I'm trying to think. We, we before you asked, I, there was I had another thought, but now it's escaped me. But uh, it's part of being fifty, folks. Yeah. Right. Fifty plus. <laughs> yeah. CRS, buddy. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> so and also. Uh, we started drinking this morning at seven. At least I did. Uh, yeah, right. So, Tell me, um, and it's midnight right now. So just to give you some kind of an idea where we're at. No. Um, so I, you, we got time for one more quick movie thing. What? How long have we been going? I don't know. I don't does know. that have a timer on it? Uh, it might have. Let me look. Ooh, it does. I can't see it. That's oh, part of, it's part of being part, 50. part of being at fifty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, we got time. Okay. We got 10 more minutes. Yeah. Sure. We're yeah, sure. Do a 30. Do yeah. A 30. All right. Let's go. Let's go 30. Okay. Again, we're, we're learning here, folks. Yep. This is our so, first uh, one. So, uh, so bear with us. Yeah. And Tiger with us. And right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. The dad uh, jokes are coming up. Guess, guess what's getting deleted out uh, now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, strange. I haven't been to the movies in. I don't know, you know, the whole COVID thing for one, but for two, I'm also like, I'm, I'm not going to spend my money, my, my hard earned cash on stuff that I think is not appropriate for me, you know, for mm -hmm. whatever messaging reasons, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but the following day, I went to see this on a Friday and then the following day on Saturday, I went to go see 2000 Mules, right? Just Dinesh D'Souza. And it's all about the 2020 election and all that stuff. And, um, you haven't seen that, have you? I am not. Okay. So the only thing I'd say about it for, for, um, for you in particular, I think you should watch it. Um, only because it's interesting. I don't think he, I think people go well. So first of all, there's confirmation bias, right? If you right. believe that the election was stolen sure. or rigged or whatever, you're going to go and go like, yeah, this is right. You know, yeah, if that, you don't, movie, you're not even going to watch it. Right. Probably. That movie was made for a certain audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not going to but convince you, people. If you can, yeah. If you can actually go in open-minded, what you'll find is that, 
they present interesting information, um, but this is, I feel like this was kind of exactly the opposite of Maverick in, in this way. Okay. In Maverick, I thought the presentation was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, the cinematography, the sound, the, the way that it was all put together was beautiful, but the story was rubbish. Mm-hmm. This is the opposite. I thought the story itself was interesting. It had lots of merit, but... I mean, they used like staged shots of Dinesh D'Souza in his house, pretending to check an email. And then his wife walks around the corner really awkwardly, right? Because they're not actors, man. These are mm-hmm. like, you know, regular old people. And um, this if you haven't seen it and you see that scene, this is exactly why actors get paid good money because they right. can fake that stuff. Sure. And average schmucks can't do it. But um, so I think that took away a little bit that that production value that they didn't have mm-hmm. took away a little bit from the message. But I think the message itself was really an, it's an interesting it's worth looking at. Right. So mm-hmm. believe or don't believe. I didn't, I didn't find the thing 100 percent convincing. I'm like, that's it. That's it. We're all going to court. You know, I, I didn't think it was that, but it was definitely like, hmm, somebody should be looking into this a little bit deeper, at least, you know, try to find some facts. So that's how I that's how I so, thought of it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I haven't seen it, so I can't really comment too much on the movie. I, I kind of got an idea what it was about. Yeah, they just they just um they've they correlated some information. They have some video footage of ballot boxes getting stuffed. So I mean, just all that just by itself. If that's all you have is a video of of these people stuffing twenty, thirty, fifty ballots in a box. I mean, that's not legal, first mm-hmm. of all, right? So no other evidence. But then they. They they tracked a bunch of people, and the reason they named it 2,000 Mules, they tracked a bunch of people using their cell phones. Each cell phone's got its unique ID, right? So they tracked these people, and they set the criteria, like, we're not even going to pay attention to these people unless they went to at least 10 drop boxes for these um ballots right so a ballot drop-off box if they didn't if they went to six we're, we're not paying attention to them so that's a pretty high bar mm-hmm. so most people have no reason to go to more than one mm-hmm. so if you went to 10 you're definitely something shady right i mean it's it's questionable um so they tracked all these guys and they have roughly they have like two thousand. Hmm. And the reason that they think this is important is that most of the time, you know, like they say cheating happens in every election, right? But usually it's not enough to to swing the swing the actual outcome of the election. Mm-hmm. And by their numbers, um, if you kind of aggregate all of the all of the numbers that they have using their criteria, um, Pennsylvania would yeah. have swung the other way, and Michigan would have swung the other way, and Arizona would have swung the other way, which totally turns the election upside down. Right. So, um, and again, you know, we'll probably never know. We'll never know. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll know. again, my, uh, you know, we've talked about this before. I mean, anytime there's an election, and by the way, 2020 election was painful, but, oh, uh, but, uh, crazy stuff, but yeah, the, uh, uh, you know, but anytime there's an election and like, I said, we were just talking about this, that, that if the Republicans lose and the Republicans are going to call foul and yeah. the Democrats lose and Democrats yeah. are going to call foul, yeah. that's the reality. So, and that's the thing that I, that I, I wish, and it, this won't happen either, but I right. wish that people could watch a film like this as a nonpartisan film, right? right? This is bad for both sides. Sure. If cheating is happening, it is bad for both sides. Oh, well. Because if one side gets away with cheating, then the other side's going to go like, well, shit, all we got to do is cheat and we can win. And then they're going to start, you well, know, so then it's all goes well, down. right now, and, and while this is being recorded, I mean, they're doing the the. January 6th prime yeah. time stuff, yeah. you know, they're, they're, only certain people are going to watch that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and, and so, you know, uh, it, just like, the, you know, the people that watch the 2000 Mules are going to watch mm-hmm. 2000 Mules and the mm-hmm. people that watch the January 6th stuff. And by the way, uh, watching congressional hearings, I don't know what political side you're on. There's no, no way I'm ever fucking <laughs> yeah, watching that. Okay. No way I'm ever watching it. the bourbon. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like, oh, that's prime time. Great. Yeah, right. Exactly. Thank God for streaming. Uh, yeah. Check out new, new episodes of Barry and Stranger Things. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. But, but, but the, here's yeah. the thing. Here's another thing that, that I, that I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an inside my own head type person. I, you know, I don't think that the political climate that we live in right now is all that different than it's ever been. I I, I agree. I don't think so. I well, think to a certain th- extent, but I well, hear you. So I think the difference is now is the ease in in with which people can gather information. Sure. And or let me rephrase that: the ease in which with organizations can shove information in your face. Social media. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure in uh, 1790. 
there was an election going on at some point, and the same kind of stuff was happening. Yeah, not not that I'm no hist- history buff. Yeah, me but, either. Uh, but with that said, I, I I've seen like these things where. You know, people write, wrote, like, you know, there were elections in 1790 that people wrote yeah. massively scathing stuff yes. about each candidate and yeah. put, put, put it in the newspaper. Yeah. And that was their social media. But again, you know, a, a, probably a large swath of the country didn't even get the newspaper. Right. Couldn't so read the newspaper. Yeah, or couldn't read. Yeah. So now it's, you can't escape this stuff. Oh, you I know. You can't escape it. And, it's and everywhere. Like, and, and like we and said, it everybody, permeates everything in the culture. Yeah. You know? And ironically, uh, because of what we're doing right now, everybody's got a voice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> we all do not need a voice. So uh, where are we at time-wise? Uh, I don't know. I can't see this thing. Oh, my gosh. He's, he's, over, he's older than me. <laughs> no. Hey, it says 35. Are we 35 right now? That's what it says. Okay, well, when we, ha- when we stop there, I, I had other thoughts. Maybe we'll pick them up next time. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah, because again, this is just a test podcast, which I will post. Okay. And uh, we'll figure it all out. But... Uh, but our current plan right now is maybe to, to do uh, maybe about one a week, you know, and sure. Yeah. You know, we'll figure stuff out. Uh, I, I probably figure out a way to put an email out there or some sort of place where we can post if anybody has any ideas of what they want to hear us talk about. And again, uh, you know, we're, you know, we, we uh, kind of listen, listen to a lot of different music, especially older, older music, mm-hmm. uh, watch movies. A lot of we're, we're kind of fans of, um, of multiple different forms of entertainment. So if there's anything you want us to watch or talk about, feel free to chime in. Uh, this is going to go in a lot of different directions. So get yeah, ready for I that. Think it's, it's pretty general. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, uh, with that said, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and leave it there. Uh, look forward to, to uh, hearing from everybody and we'll talk to you soon. Yep. See you. See you.